Okay, let's look at this example. And this example includes a rod, the metal rod, pivoted at this point right here. The bottom of the rod called point A, and this pivot called it point B, and up here called it point C. And then at point C, there's a spring attached to it. Okay, and the other end of the spring is attached to another pivot, which is point D, a fixed point. So, initially, this rod is in this position, okay, vertical position, and it's not moving. And then we release it, okay? So something's gonna happen. This spring, okay, it's going to cause a motion, a rotation, okay? Whether or not it's going to rotate this way, clockwise, or counterclockwise, we don't know. We need to we need to figure it out. You're asked to find the final angular velocity of the rod, omega two, after it has rotated ninety degrees. Okay. Again, it could be going clockwise ninety degrees, going like this, or after ninety degrees, going like this. How do we decide which way it's going to go? Well, look at this given information. The spring constant, K, is 600 newton per meter. Now, don't confuse this K with the radius of gyration, K, K, so it applies to totally different things. So, spring constant is given. Now, this unstretched length of the spring is given as 225 millimeters. So, when it's unstretched, it's 225. How long is this? right here, in this instant, that will decide which way the spring is going to go. Because if at this position, the spring is being stretched, then what's going to happen? It would tend to shrink back to its unstretched position, which means that it would tend to pull this point C back down, which means that this rod is going to rotate clockwise. If at this position, it is being um, squeezed, okay? So, it would tend to go back to its unstretched position, which means that it will tend to go this way. It will tend to elongate, which means that the rod is going to go kind of clockwise. So, which is it? Well, let's find out the length of this spring at this instant. So, for the spring, Roughly draw the spring here, point C, point D. So the length of this, okay. draw a triangle. We know this position right here, this distance between C and B is given is 180 millimeter, which is 0.18 meters. Between these two points, this is point B. BD is given as 0.525 meters. So, this is the right triangle. So, this BD length, right, L BD equals, let's use Pythagorean theorem, 0.18 squared plus 0.525 squared. It gives you 0.555 meters. So, right now, we're measured at 0.555 meters compared to an unstretched length. So, at this instant, the spring is being stretched, which means that it would tend to pull the point C back down okay, to its unstretched position, which means that the whole thing is going to go clockwise. Okay, so that's my omega direction. Okay, so now, Omega okay, is being asked, okay, it's the unknown. So, in this problem, it's more convenient we apply the work energy method, okay, because um, in the equation, velocity is explicit. So, let's apply it and see what it looks like. So, we have change of kinetic energy plus change of potential energy due to weight plus change of potential energy due to the spring equals all our 
the forces dotted with ds plus a flight couple integrated over um, change of angle. Change of angle, by the way, okay, is the final angle minus the initial angle. So you're given that this thing has rotated 90 degrees. That's the instant we're interested in. So change of angle. Theta is 90 degrees, but if we apply it into any of these equations, now degree is not a standard unit, okay? It's radian, right? So it's actually pi over 2. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's look at this equation. See how we can uh, simplify right away. Let's see. Change kinetic energy, okay, which involves velocities, right? Of course. We need to keep this term, except that the initial velocity, okay, whether it is the linear velocity v or omega, at position one, right now, it's all zero. Okay, so that's nice. Change of potential due to weight, okay, at center of gravity, where it's right here. That's your center of gravity right here, right in the middle. Okay. And get a little crowded here. Omega. So this distance right here is 450. Okay. So before and after, obviously there is a change of height. Okay. Of this point G, center of gravity. So yes, there is a change of potential energy due to weight. Is there a potential energy change due to spring? Obviously, because now we have a spring, right? What about this? Is there any other forces involved here? Is there a friction? Um, is there any other applied forces? I don't see anything here. Okay, so this term goes to zero right away. I also don't see any applied moment, applied couple. Okay? So nothing is given here. So this term goes zero also. Alright. So now let's expand these terms. Now, before we do, maybe it will help to draw a picture in the after position, at position two. So at two. Draw the rod. Okay. So A now becomes here, and C is right here, and then point B is right here, which is the pivot right here. I'm going to draw the, the pivot right here. And then point G, center of gravity, is this. Okay, so what about the length? From A to C that's given that's 900 or 0.9 meters let's work everything in terms of meters now BC is 1.18 between C and D okay now distance between B and D is given so between B and the point D right here is given as 0.525 meters. At this position, then you can figure out C and D distance. Okay, simply is 525 minus 0.18. That's with C D distance. Okay, so expand this equation. So change of kinetic energy and potential and the spring potential energy um, can be written out and we can do it next.